Hello and welcome to this short little video on how to import data into R. So let's go ahead and start R. There I've started R. Now we've got three ways of importing data. One, we can hard code the data into R. That's, ha ha uh, that's handy if you're going to be sharing the script with other people working with them. Two, we can load the data or import the data from a local file. And three, we can import the data from the internet. Now, of course, there's a lot of other ways of doing it, but these are the three most common and the three that I think you should know. So let's start with option one, hard coding the data into R. And again, I'm assuming that you're following along with the little handout and listening to this and maybe kick back in your pajamas and wearing some slippers. So the first thing I'm going to do is start a new script. In PC language, this is going to be new script. Uh, in Mac, I really don't know. Let's make the window nice and large. And I'll copy this over from the script that I have online. Make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything. So these three lines create the data and actually create three variables. The first variable is called block. Second is treatment, TRT, MNT, and the third is growth. Now the way that this is set up, growth is going to be the dependent variable. It's going to be the measurement of the growth of a plant, I assume. Treatment is going to be three different types of treatments that you can give to the plants. Think of fertilizers, perhaps. And blocks are going to be uh, flower beds, let's say. So we're going to number the blocks one through five, letter the treatments A, B, and C, and then have the growth. Now, since A, B, and C are strings, are characters, you're going to put those in quotation marks. Since 1 through 5 and all the growth values are numbers, you don't need quotation marks. Use quotation marks if you're using categorical variables. That's a good rule of thumb. Now, the cool function, or the important function, is C. C stands for collect. So what the C function does is it collects everything within the parentheses into one variable. So the block, after running this line, block is going to hold 15 values. The first one is a 1, the second one is a 1, the third one is a 1, the fourth one is a 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, etc. After I run this line, TRT MNT is going to have 15 variables, uh, values. First one's an A, the second one's a B, the third one's a C, the fourth one's an A, etc. After running this line, growth is also going to have 15 values. First one's 7.84, second one's 6.78 you see the pattern here. Now I could also create a variable called year and instead of having or repeating the number 1997 15 times this is a short way of doing it. It's the REP or the repeat function. What this does is it takes whatever's before the comma and repeats it the number of times of whatever numbers after the comma. And then we can look at creating a new variable. If instead of needing to uh, model the growth, we want to model the log of the growth rate, then we could create a new variable called LG growth, or whatever we want to call it, and set that equal to the log of growth. And by default, LG is the natural log. So I'm going to run all of those. Now, Running this is either Control R for PC people or Command Enter for Mac people on the keyboard. Or you can go up to, sorry, clicking on the wrong place. This little button here that says Run Liner Selection, uh, clicking on that will send it over and run it. Notice it's all been run, everything's in red, no errors whatsoever. What those five lines did was just store those values in the computer's memory. Now we're going to want to create this. We're going to want to take those five variables, stick them together into one data set. And it's really preferable to take all these disparate variables and put them together into one data set because then you can treat the data set as its own unit. The function that you're going to use is called data.frame. R calls data sets data frames. Frame because it illustrates, it sees the data set as a table. So I'm going to run this. 
now we can go ahead and look at what's in these variables. So what's in the block variable? Notice I'm now over in the console side. I'm going to type in block, then enter. Those are all the variables in block. TRTMNT, those are all the variables in treatment. This is the data set, tree data. There's our data frame, or our data set. Consists of five variables. First variable is the block, second is treatment, third is growth, fourth is year, fifth is log growth. So this 1.888584 is just the natural log of 6.61. So block 5, treatment C, the plant grew 6.61 inches in 1997, and the log of that 6.61 is 1.888584. So that's one way of importing data into R. It's hard coding. It's very handy if you have a small data set. If you have a very large data set, not going to be so handy. Option two is going to be importing the data from a local file. So let's see how to do that. The function to read in data is read.csv. This assumes that your data is in comma separated value form. To know if it is in comma separated value form, you'll just look at the extension and it's CSV. Or if you're looking in your, Explo in your Windows Explorer or in the Mac, whatever the Mac equivalent is, it'll say Microsoft Excel, probably comma separated values. This is the path, this is the absolute path to the file. The file name is fisher38.csv. It's located in my H drive. Those are two slashes. I'm going to run this. Control R. Look over on the left on the console window. There's no errors. That means that variable F38 holds that entire data set. Let's go ahead and look at what's in F38. Type in F38, enter. There's our Fisher 38 data set. Now I called it F38. I stored this entire data set in the variable F38 because F38 told me it had some meaning to me that it was the Fisher 38 data set. Had I wanted, I could call this Bob. I could call it Sue. I called it F38. Notice it reads in everything nice, neat. This F38 is now a data frame. Holds the entire data set. That's option two. That was rather fast. Option three is very similar to option two. Option three, you're reading it from the internet. Option two is from a local file. So let's go ahead and read the stats grade data set from the internet. We're going to call this data set SG. Again, it's read.csv, and it's going to be .csv because this is a CSV file. This is the URL for the stats grade data set. Going to run that. No errors on the left. Type in SG. There's the variable SG, and SG holds the entire stats grades data set. Again, I called it SG because, well, SG is short for stats grades. I could have called it whatever I wanted. Notice that we don't have to be limited just to those values. We could, instead of having just GPA, we could have the GPA divided by 4. Can I think of it as a percent of A-ness? I don't know. We could. Here's how you do it. Notice that GPA divided by 4 is not going to do it. I'm going to hit Control R got my first error. Object GPA not found. Hmm. Notice that the uh, the error statement uh, errors are not always helpful. But you will see this frequently. I have seen it frequently. And so that should cue us in that, especially with that error message, object GPA is not found, that means that R does not know that you mean the GPA that's in this data set. 
to specify that you want the GPA that's in this data set, the SG data set, SG dollar sign, SG data set, SG dollar sign, GPA divided by 4. It's SG because that's what we call the data set, it's dollar sign, short for data set, dollar sign. Control R that. Okay, so this just gives us the values of GPA divided by 4. We want to save that into our data set, though. We're going to call this GPA PCT. And since we want to save this into our data set, we're going to prepend GPA PCT with SG dollar sign as well. Control R. Again, no errors on the left. Now notice this. Here's the data set. Scrolling up variable is new. We just put the GPA PCT variable in the SG data set. That's going to be very helpful because we are able to treat data sets as one single entity. Okay, those are the three options of getting data into R. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care.